Okay, so I had a video request uh, by Martin James Designs, and he requested a video on prepping a wheel and coating it from start to finish. Like, you know, I guess every step I do from, you know, getting it ready to go in the rim strip to getting in the rim strip, and you know, so on. So I have these wheels. Um, I haven't done anything to them yet. They still have the center caps in them, which are plastic that you can't powder coat. So we're gonna get everything stripped down. Um, you don't necessarily need these tools. This is just what I use. Um, I use this to bust out the center cap. I just use this side of the handle and I just kind of tap it. Uh, I use this to get the valve stem off. This is a Torx bit and I use this to get the sensor off. If it doesn't have a sensor, I just skip straight to this step of cutting the backside out and then pulling it out with those. So we'll get into this and you can see how I prep a wheel. So that comes out pretty easy. Um, when they have all these uh, weights right here, I usually just scrape them off with a flathead. And then you can just pull them off like that. Now a lot of times with the adhesive that's left, I'll just stick that straight into the rim strip and it'll take care of most of it and what it doesn't, I will sometimes rinse off or possibly pressure wash off and then I'll just sandblast the rest of it. Um, sometimes stickers are good to remove because it won't, uh, especially if they're in the barrel because your rim strip won't really touch what's underneath it. If the sticker's on there really well, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, don't know what this is that's on it. Looks like it might be something from an old wheel weight. Wheel weight. We'll worry about that a little bit later. Um, so next, to take these uh, these sensors off, stick this torch bit in here and just unscrew it. It's pretty simple. And you'll want to keep these and save and put them to the side to give back to your customer if you're not putting the wheels back on, because they are expensive and they're gonna want them back. And now for the valve stem, I just take a razor blade, a box cutter, something sharp, knife, whatever, and cut around it like that. And then pry it back a little bit more. And just keep cutting. You'll get this little ring off like that once you cut it. And then you can grab this side of the valve stem and it'll pull right out. And that's gonna go in the trash. Typically they replace those anyways when you take your tires and wheels and have them remounted and balanced. Um, cause you don't, cause they are rubber and rubber dry rots. So, and these are cheap. So it's a good thing to replace these when you get them done anyways. So now this wheel, uh, if you wanted to, you can rinse it off. I typically don't rinse them off. I just go straight in the rim strip with it, rim strip with it. Uh, but it's ready to get dipped. So I'll add a clip of that and that's gonna be the next step. Okay, so what I do is I take a piece of copper wire and I twist it on here. Um, I like copper cause you can keep bending it a lot of times and it doesn't ever break in half. I mean, I'm sure it will out there a while, but it's real, uh, I guess malleable. Um, I have another one in here right now. So we're going to lay this one on top of it, just like this on its back. Uh, we'll probably leave it in here for about, uh, 25, 30 minutes. 
Uh, it's a little cold outside, so the rim strip is a little bit slower. Um, you know, I, I'm down here in Texas, so I don't really need to heat it because these cold days like this really don't last that long. But anyways, we're gonna let this sit in for about 30 minutes and we'll check on it and see where they're at. And then we're gonna get it in the neutralizing tank right there. Okay, these have been in, in here for about 30 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and take them out and get them in the neutralizing tank. Um, my neutralizing tank is running a little bit low on baking powder, or baking soda, sorry. So it's probably not going to uh, bubble up as much as it should, if any. But you just move it over here. Let that drop to the bottom. We'll go ahead and take this one out too. Get it in there. Try to get off as much as you can before you move it over. And just let those sit in there for a little bit. And then um, we'll take them out and we'll rinse them off with just a water hose because they came pretty clean. So. Okay, so now you can kind of see there's a little bit of paint that's left on there even after chemical stripping. So we're gonna take a water hose to it and most of that should come just right off. So I'll let y'all watch as I do that. So that was just a pretty quick rinse and you can tell, uh, hope you can tell that there's no paint left on this. It's just bare aluminum. Now this isn't, that's just what was under my fingers are dirty. That's what you're seeing right there. But now these are ready for outgassing. So I'll show a short clip of that loading the oven and then we're going to let those sit in there for a while and then we'll get on to the next step. Okay. So the next step is to get these wheels in the oven for outgassing. Uh, the oven is currently preheating. It's at about 370 degrees. Uh, I've got it set for 440. And typically I'll leave them in there for about two hours, two and a half hours. It really just depends. Um, and I just set them in there. That's not going to hurt them. We're, we still have to blast them. So that's not an issue. But, and this is just out gassing. You can hang them up if you want it, you know, but this doesn't hurt anything. And I have to take the little eye bolts out anyways to sandblast them. So I just do it like this most of the time. But we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna let this sit in there for about two, two and a half hours, depending on how long it takes the oven to heat up the rest of the way. Uh, it just dropped quite a bit, you know, having it open, but. Okay, so these have been in there for about two and a half hours. Uh, we're gonna take them out, let them get cooled off. And then we're going to get them in the sandblasting cabinet. tape off this uh, back pad right here. I already blew off the pad. I still got to blow off the rest of the wheel, but the pad is clean. I use the green tape and then I just use these right here from Harbor Freight, these little box cutter uh, razor blades to trace around the edge and cut off the excess. So let's go ahead and get into that.
Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this one. These pads, um, they're kind of a pain to mask. Let me touch it up a little bit more right here. But, you know, this is the back. I mean, it's the back pad, so nobody's really going to see it, you know, except for the, the customer when they pick it up. But, I mean, it mounts against the rotor. So, you know, just the main, main part, the most important part is that you get this covered up. So when it rests against the rotor that it, you know, it's not off. It's to the factory uh, machining. So this is gonna work. Let's go ahead and do the other three and then we'll move on to the next step. So the wheels, they're about ready to go. I'm gonna spray these hot. Um, they're at about like 290 right now. I'm gonna try to wait till I get to about 300. Um, I apologize for the mess in here. I've been going nonstop, so it's a little bit of a wreck. Um, you know, between customers, jobs and stuff, I don't have a whole lot of time. But anyways, we got the powder loaded up. We're going gloss black with these. Uh, the game is set up. You can kind of see what I'm gonna be running. I'm gonna be running a factory preset, the recode setting. It's typically what I run on everything. Um, got the tripod set up so I can get a couple clips for y'all of this. But it won't be much longer and we'll get to spraying them.
next step is going to be, uh, you don't have to do this now, but I recommend pulling this tape off while they're still a little bit warm. Uh, it helps. It helps it come off a little bit easier. Um, I like to do it anywhere from like 150 to 200 degrees. The powder is still soft, but it's not stringy. So right now we're at about 214. So it might be a little bit high still or too hot. Uh, but we're going to try it and see how it comes out. If it starts to string, I'll just stop and reach and pick up later. So it's, a, it's on the edge of being stringy, but it'll be okay. We can go ahead and keep doing this. All right, so the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna call the customer to come pick his parts up and admire your own work.